Hello guys, welcome to Sadan's World and this is Sadan. In this video, you know what we do. In this channel, sorry. In this channel, you know what we do. And what we do is to prepare students for various exams, alright? Down to the university exams also. Okay? So I'm very, very excited to be here again with this um, new video series, which is a sort 103. Many persons have been asking of this and they've been asking, I've been asking, I've been asking. Sadan, when are you going to start? When are you going to start? Hey guys, I finally was started. So do well to watch the videos, do well to practice very well. Most of you started doing your exam first, or so it's 101. Most of you started very late. Most of you never wanted to try it. But when you tried it, you were like, whoa, this is, this was, uh, this is actually very helpful. But already, it's, it's already late, okay? It was already late then. Your exam was just like few days um, to come, okay? So please try. As I'm uploading them now, try to follow up with the videos back to back to back to back because when it's exam time during the exam time you're going to be having um some you will not be able to watch very well because you'll be having some other subjects to cover to meet up with so that's the major problem there all right so without wasting much of our time let's just get started at one so the first question we have here is what can be done in a lab so basically experiments okay experiment uh, researches and um projects can be done too scientific projects can be done in the lab um and so on and so forth all right the next question list the futures of a lab so futures of a lab means we're talking about like what can we see inside the lab basically that's what it means okay so the lab should be a, a building for the features of a lab means okay let me see uh, why would they ask this kind of question in the first place? But let me just tell you what uh, the possible features of a lab can be. So, uh, the lab should be a place that is always clean, okay, and protected by burglar pools, by a door, okay, consisting of workbenches, like the, the workbenches with these top tables where we place our um, tripod stand and all the equipment we need. Okay, having different labs should also have different apparatus, uh, including safety apparatus and measuring tools and all the rest, like the cylinders and the ammeter, all those things should also be there. It should also be well ventilated with good lights, light system. Okay, um, there should be flowing water and tap there. Okay, and there should also be, a, if possible, there should be power, constant power supply. All right, so those are the, some of the futures of a lab. The next thing we have here is which of these colors? Okay, what is the backbone of a lab? Now, guys, some of you might be wondering, what is this guy saying? What kind of questions are these ones? Yes, um, they are very simple, right? It's because we've not started, we've not even started this course at all. Now, look at this question. What, can, what is the backbone of a lab? Now, while we have all these features that can be found inside a lab, one of them are specifically called the backbone of a lab. Called, it is called the backbone of a lab. Reason being that without it, there is no lab in short. Okay? That's the first thing that comes to our mind whenever we're look, looking at a lab. Or let me, let's say that's the first thing that we tend to see. Well, I don't know. So that's where every other thing is placed. Those long table, where every other, where the type of stand is placed, where the other reagent, all those other things are placed. That's the backbone. And what is it called? That's called the workbench. Okay, so workbench is the backbone of every lab. You know what the workbench means now? The workbench, some persons call it um, lab, um, some persons call it work table, some persons call it lab bench. Okay, so uh, bench doesn't mean it's this one we normally see in Nigeria, like we usually call them. You understand know what I'm saying? Not this ones we normally sit on. So workbench. So basically lab bench and so basically work work table or working table. So that's where we place our stuff. It should be make, made up of a very, very good material. All right, what's the next question? Next question is, which of these colors are most preferred in the lab? Now, there's what we call quality of a good lab. Okay, quality of a good lab. Now, let me just give you two of them at once so that I can answer this question with one of them. Quality of a good lab is that that lab must be well ventilated. Ventilated in the sense that, like enough air, enough air should be coming inside. So the place should not be very warm, and should not also be very um, cold. So enough air should be coming inside, and that lab should also be well illuminated, like very bright. 
okay we like if you watch the lab it should be constructed in such a way that there, there is a good number of windows like we don't want any kind of um, um, dark atmosphere or something in the lab we want the lab to be white bright as as bright as possible okay we want a perfect uh, illumination not a, a partial illumination and there are some colors that brings about this perfect brightness okay yeah there's some colors that brings there's some colors that naturally want to make the the atmosphere or the the room to be dark or dim so we are we try as much as possible to avoid those colors hope you're getting the concept so of all these colors now in your uniport material they specifically listed some of these um colors but in how will I, let me put it this way the the major thing happening there is that we just avoid dark colors okay or let me say light absorbing colors okay in the lab and we prefer lighter colors and light reflecting colors in the lab that's the major concept all right from your uniport material they mentioned that you should avoid black blue and red and you should you sh uh, white and yellow is prefer are preferable so here they said which of these um, colors are preferred are most preferred in the lab so black no blue no white correct red no yellow correct hope you're getting the gist here if you know that you're already learning something from this video and this video is already breaking down your textbook please do well to just hit the like button it will not cost you extra data to do that okay still the same data you're using seeing this lecture that it will cost you to just click on that like button subscribe to the channel if you've not subscribed and finally and the most important one is make sure you share with your friends also let's move on to the next topic um, next question very quickly why are dark colors like black blue red preferred in the lab um, well, that's just a simple question i have already explained before the reason so i said we want the lab to be well illuminated like we want everywhere to be as bright as possible okay maybe i didn't explain very well though why do we actually want this lab to be very very bright and well illuminated like why do we want it to be bright number one we want like we want to in case of our read i don't know how to put it now um for reading purpose that's one one um one purpose okay when it comes to reading of all these um glasswares with their calibrations okay sometimes you notice that some students stress their eyes trying to figure out the the point where this um fluid or liquid or whatsoever is so at least it will be an extra aid if the room is bright at least starting from there I hope you get what i'm saying it will be an extra aid if the room is what bright now let's move on to the next question okay yes let's move on to the next question the next question is list at least five things that should be found inside the lab come inside the lab come on this one is not even difficult this one says there's nothing here in this one this one is just walk over five things <laughs> you think about it pause this video and if you cannot list up to 20 self thermometer uh, hey i don't think i'm i'm now saying eh. Uh, hey hey now it's not difficult now thermometer micro meter screw gate vernier caliper your glasswares that's those test tubes measuring instruments safety instruments and so on and so forth that's not supposed to be a problem i beg all right the next one laboratory workbench can also be called i just mentioned it now i said it can also be called work table or um lab bench you can back you can send the video you can just uh, send it to the previous i think about two minutes backward or four minutes i said it there when we started i think i said it when i was talking about the workbench here so here we have at least five okay here we have laboratory workbench can also be okay we've done that now what are the features of your work work table oh, remember i said workbench is the same as work table so what are the features of the work table the most important feature every lab bench material must possess is it must be durable that's the most important feature it must be what durable guys every lab bench material must be durable like very very durable. at least it should last for some time let me go back to that question i skipped now the features of a work table now the work table should have strength like the work table i think is work table material i think it's work table material so that work table material it should have strength like it should be able to withstand there's what we call a mechanical brick so able to withstand mechanical shock sorry so able to withstand all those things that will be putting on top of them okay yes yeah, so um it should be durable number one then it should have four classes of resistance 
please listen up very well take your pen and write because i expect you that whenever you are checking out these videos you you are coming here with your writing materials that's what i always expect too. so so take your pen and write okay all right so it should be durable number one and it should possess these four kinds of resistance the four resistance are what number one resistance to water that's water resistance number two temperature resistance number three scratch re resistance number four um chemical resistance these are the four major resistance it should possess i repeat number one chemical resistance number two water resistance number three scratch resistance number four uh i don't even know what i've said though um temperature resistance okay so those are the four um, so those are the five futures of you i don't think it's future sorry sorry i think we're talking about um i think we're talking about properties features of a work work table i have used a work table sorry it means those things we should see we should see around them okay so like they, they contain the sink and um the tap okay sink um tap a uh, water facet also and um many other apparatus are clipped and are, are clipped on them some of them contain what we call the base cabinet please take note of this that we have um sometimes this work table where we perform our experiment under the work table we have the base cabinet attached with base cabinet is like a cupboard okay where we store different reagents so some persons prefer doing it that way so it will be easier to just quickly get anything out any reagent or anything i want from just putting my hand on that to just get it out but but most times most the most preferable and the most common one is that the base cabinet is kept separate somewhere else while the um workbench or work table is just there like that okay so whenever i need it i'll just go and get it from there but just take note that these are the, some of the features of this but it's also important to take note that the workbench you tell you what are the properties that a workbench must possess okay a workbench needs to be durable it needs to be water resistant it needs to be um, chemical resistant it needs to be temperature resistant and also need to be resistant to what scratch these three lab bench workbench materials this is where small problem now busts out because we don't just want you to list the materials we also want you to understand something that has to do with their properties too but let me see if i can help you with this information the first one is called MDF. MDF. So this MDF, the formula of MDF is there. I think that's medium density fiber board. All right. Medium density fiber board is the weakest of all the materials that can be used as a workbench. It is the weakest of all the materials that can be used as a workbench. Medium density fiber board is the weakest. Why is it the weakest? It is only it only has strength. It is not water durable. It's not um, uh, scratch durable. Um, sorry, not water resistant, chemical resistant, scratch resistant. No other resistant at all. The only thing it has is that it is just durable. So that is for MDF. Then, uh, when I was trying to study this last year, the first thing I took note of was the weakest and the strongest. Okay. Of course, you know the weakest is the one that have only one property of the five, while the strongest is the one that has all. Right. So the, what about the strongest? The strongest here, guys, is this one we call epoxy resin board. So epoxy resin board has epoxy resin board is durable. It has strength. Okay, it is water resistant. It is chemical resistant. It is uh, all the resistance I mentioned. It has all of them. Okay, so this is the best way to learn this thing. So they tell you list three. Um, you should list the MDF, which is medium. <coughs> What's it called again? Medium density fiber board. Then, as the weakest in your mind, that's what you'll be calculating. Then, the next you want to list now is epoxy resin, which is the strongest. This is not easy to put in your brain, but if you read it again and again and again, try to even present it. Try to say the way I'm saying it. In fact, you can even try to play the video and quickly answer the questions before I answer them. That's another way you can make it stick to your head. All right. So here again, I think what else? Okay, I've, I mean, I've, I've mentioned only three. Let me mention another one. The next one I want to mention now is the next strongest to this epoxy resin. Is the next strongest to the epoxy resin. This one now has everything except temperature resistance. Hmm? It's called phenolic. 
phenolic board or phenolin yes it's phenolic i think so this one has everything except temperature resistance all right you can go to your textbook and look up i've already made it easier for you i'm sure from here you'll be able to finish up the other ones okay the other one now has everything except two and so on so but basically here the materials we're looking at here mdf is the weakest right it has only durability it does not have any other resistance the strongest is epoxy resin right it has all both durability and all the resistance and then the one that is after uh, epoxy resin is um, the phenolic board this one has everything you know what i mean by everything right it has strength it has water resistance chemical resistance scratch resistance but does not have temperature resist it's not temperature resistant ladies and gentlemen let's move on to the next question all right if you look at the next question this three lab okay here we have of all the materials which is the weakest of all the material okay i've already mentioned right i said the the weakest of the materials is mdf that is that uh, medium density fiber board and the next question i'm seeing is which of them is the best i've already told you that the best is epoxy resin board a particular material has all four properties whoa except temperature resistance it is likely to be dash oh boy i just mentioned this now it's likely to be dash I just mentioned that that is going to be phenolic. It's as if I mentioned everything, you know. Guys, let's just do it at once. Since we've started, there's only two that is remaining. So let's just finish up with the materials at once. Let's start from the top. I said the weakest is MDF, right? This one has uh, only strength. does not have any other resistance. Then the next one is which one? Um, uh, epoxy resin, which is the best, okay? Then I said the one after epoxy resin, that that one is um, um, phenolic. That one has everything except temperature resistant okay now let's finish so it's many only two the two remaining are granite top and laminated board or let me say apply laminated board something like that right we're not talking about laminated board and there's something similar about this these two guys it's very beautiful to know that these two guys possess the same level of strength they only have they only have a um, durability surely and water resistant they don't have any other resistance take note to the ply laminate board ply ply laminate board and the granite top only have water resistance with their normal durability remember that all materials the first criteria the first condition the first and most important property of any material that will be used as a workbench is durability so all of them are durable they have strength but this granite top and ply laminate now have water resistance but they don't have any other characteristics again list and explain the types of workbench ladies and gentlemen it's not difficult so the types of workbench we have two types we have the one we call the isolated island sorry island workbench number one number two we have the wall faced workbench you know what island mean right island mean a, a piece of land surrounded by water that's what this workbench means so if this work island workbench means a workbench that is situated at a place, a kind of position in the lab whereby people can surround it like move. Please, I'm sorry I'm talking fast. I'm working with time, okay? But I'm sure what I'm saying is clear. So, island workbench now. If, if there's any point you want to hear very well, just pause the video. Island workbench, that one is a kind of workbench that is arranged or situated in a place where there will be um, people or students or researchers, whosoever, can stand around the bench okay it accommodates more persons than the normal one it accommodates more persons than the normal workbench than the wall faced wall face is one whereby it to be uh, one of the side will be uh, well i say face to the wall like you cannot surround it all around uh -huh. like that's the type of using you guys have in uniport here all right, let me, but let's move to the next page. I have like two minutes more to finish up with this video. Let's see how it goes. Two minutes more, is that? I'm not sure that's gonna be okay. All right, let's look at this video. Let's look at this one. Give the qualities of a good lab. I've mentioned before, so no need. 
qualities of a good lab a, a good lab should be well ventilated with color like sorry there should be enough air okay and the, the colors must be well chosen okay there should be water all right there should be flowing like water should be flowing i don't know how to put it there should be a good water system in the lab also okay and the apparatus must not be faulty you should use good apparatus okay all those course check for faulty apparatus and they should be replaced immediately how can i adjust the temperature of the lab room now this is very important if you look at your your slt 103 textbook they said the best temperature at which the lab can be is 20 degrees celsius even if i don't know their reason all right because it's not supposed to be one particular temperature it's supposed to be a range of temperature ranging from let me say 20 down to 25 degrees celsius so we know we're talking about the room temperature but according to them they said the best temperature is 20 degrees celsius please take note in case they ask you write your 20 degrees celsius there and collect your mark all right so give the qualities of a good lab sorry now we're saying something what if the temperature is higher or the temperature is lower than that how are we going to adjust in their material they provided means of uh, adjusting them so when the temperature is higher they advised we should open the windows very well or recommend the use of ac okay ac to cool down the atmosphere the, the room then when the temperature is lower they recommend the use of what we call central boiler so take note of that central boiler is used to heat up the lab next thing we have is how can i adjust okay we've done that gas is used in the lab for this was clearly written in your lab book currently i think they said it's for heating and flaming am i sure yes heating and flaming all right let's move let's move to the next question Okay, sorry, I think they mentioned boiling solutions and flaming. That was what they mentioned, boiling solutions and flaming. All right, the next question we have is, composition of glass wells are usually dash or dash. So glass wells are usually uh, either borosilicate or, um, glass wells are usually either borosilicate or, uh, what is this one again? Um, oh, why am I forgetting this other material they usually use? Soda lime, soda lime, that reminds me, soda lime. Glasswares are usually either borosilicate or soda lime, that's true. But borosilicate are better because they, con they, they consist of the uh, properties of a good glassware that we need, okay? They are better off than uh, soda lime. The best material is borosilicate, but these this borosilicate, they still, have, they still have rivals, okay? In the presence of hydrofluoric and phosphoric acid, they, they, they can still be affected. Take note of this, so write it down somewhere that these borosilicates are the best materials, but in the presence of hydrofluoric and phosphoric acid, they can still be affected. So write it down. They can ask you those kind of questions. So composition of glassware are usually borosilicate and soda lime. Give the characteristics of a good glassware. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A good glassware must be able to withstand some, withstand a sudden change in, in, in temperature, okay? A good glassware must be able to withstand a sudden change in temperature. A good glassware must be able to withstand a sudden change in temperature, that's one. Two, it must be able to resist what we call mechanical shock or breakage okay mechanical shock or breakage but at least not like it will not break but at least to an extent okay should be able to resist thermal shock also and should be able to resist chemical radiation so those are the four major things your material provided so a good glassware should be able to resist temperature sudden temperature change okay mechanical shock thermal shock and chemical radiations all right but that chemical radiations hydrofluoric acid and phosphoric acid can can still affect even the strongest material which is the borosilicate that's how it works so please take note of that all right let's look at the next question as i round up now because i don't want this video to be more than 25 minutes i've tried to 
Um, okay, let's see. Test tubes. No, is that where I am? No. Despite the good quality of borosilicate test tube, leads to acid that can affect it. I just said it now. It seems the person that wrote these questions are working with my spirit. I just said it now. So, that's why the good quality of borosilicate test tube, hydrofluoric acid and phosphoric acid can still affect it. Beakers and flasks should be placed on wire gaze. Okay, wire gaze help us to spread fire and still help us split. When, when burning, when, while heating, beakers and flasks should be placed on that. Test tube should be placed, should be held with what the test tube holder. It's all called test tube holder. Okay, should be placed on test tube holder. Give the full meaning of PVC. Uh, PVC is a um, polyvinyl chloride. It's a type of rubber. Okay. Yes, it's a type of rubber. Even this PTF I'm seeing here is also a type of rubber. This PTF, I think, it stands for polytetrafluoroethylene, something like that. Yes, polytetrafluoroethylene is also a type of rubber. I can tell you at least two types of plastics. Types of plastic, sorry. Polyvinyl chloride is a type of plastic. All right, write short notes on the following lab apparatus. I don't think I'm going to do that in this video, ladies and gentlemen. Because of our time, we have to wrap up here. Let me see. The next thing we have here: What are dyes used for? Dyes are used for coloring pigment. Okay, maybe help us for what we call differentiation. I'm going to look at. That. I'm going to talk about that very well in the next episode of this video. What are lab commodities? Uh, is it what commodities? Lab commodities. These are consumables. These are things that are consumed in the lab. Okay, that need that require changes from time to time. Okay, yes. So, ladies and gentlemen, before I move into the new, the next topic or the new topic for that video, I'm going to take my time to wrap up with the ones I'm not able to do here while I'm moving to the next topic or the next set of questions for that video. If you know this video is helping you and adding value and making your, your clumsy and boring textbook easier, please do well to like and share with your friends. Thank you and God bless you.